The first time I saw the WZ7 Shore Dragon, I thought, here we go again. The Chinese delivered another world first. And the key question was, why? Why do they need this complexity? Isn't the reason apparent, sir? Uh, no, Otis. This time is not obvious at all. The first news of these drones appears in 2006 when a mock up was on display at Zhuhai Air Show. The story of the development, though, is not entirely clear. For example, we know that in 2011 it was uh, seen undergoing electromagnetic compatibility tests, but we don't know when the first flight was. We know that serial production started in 2016 and the first units have been deployed in 2021. However, the aircraft has been seen operating even at an earlier date. The WZ-7 has been seen shadowing American ships in the Taiwan Strait, also controlling Korea flying from airfields in the Chinese Liaoning province. More recently, it has been spot entering the Taiwanese air identification zone. All of this because, well, obviously, the Sword Dragon is an intelligence platform. Okay, Otis, what numbers do we have about this drone? As usual, we do not have official figures for Chinese drones, but we rely on partial information collected mainly at air shows or estimates from Western analysts. The aircraft has a takeoff weight of 7,500 kilograms, a payload is 650 kilograms, and a maximum speed is 750 kilometers per hour. The range is estimated to be 7,000 kilometers. The endurance is 10 hours. The engine is a Giza WP-13 turbojet with 43.1 kN thrust. Well done, thank you, Artis. The aircraft general configuration is typical of high-altitude, long-endurance, unmanned aerial vehicles. Long and thin wings, a dorsal air intake, a relatively clean and streamlined shape, V-tail, and some minimal stealth features. These are all typical features of an aircraft that is built for range and endurance rather than speed or maneuverability. Navigation sensors seem to be hosted in this canoe-shaped structure at the front of the aircraft. This ponson is the right size and shape for a side-looking airborne radar, probably an AISA one. From the position, we may suppose that it is designed to look down. So this aircraft is likely a radar reconnaissance platform and an electronic intelligence system. This dome on the back could host an optical sensor, but it is most likely another antenna housing. I couldn't find a clear picture, so I'm not sure. So far, so good, but I think that many among you will be on the edge of the seat about a unique feature of the Sword Dragon. And I can understand that because the obvious elephant in the room! <sighs> Sorry, I keep forgetting every time I mention. So we have a big problem, sir. How big? As big as elephant sized objections, sir. Excuse me, excuse me. So... Uh, bear with me, okay? Bear with me a minute, just a minute, bear with me. Okay, we are back and now we can finally address the mystery of the very peculiar wing of the WZ-7. In the sources it was sometimes called a phi wing, like the Greek letter, I don't have any specific name for this configuration, so I believe we can adopt it. So it seems to be a tandem wing with a big swept back wing in front and a smaller swept forward wing behind. The first question is, is the aft surface lifting upwards like a wing or downwards like a tail? So from the pictures it is impossible to say. None of the pictures that I could find is close enough to appreciate any detail of the aerofoil. It sort of seems to be symmetric but laminar. But this seems unlikely because a symmetric aerofoil is probably not going to be very efficient. 
Also, none of the pictures is close enough or from the right angle to assess the difference of the angles of incidence between the two surfaces. A negative angle of attack would be a giveaway of the aft surface acting like a tail, and vice versa. However, we need to consider that the aft surface is affected by the front wing downwash, so its effective angle of attack is reduced. So in the end, the tail could be lifting downward without being twisted too much. However, I believe that the aft surface is lifting. In fact, if we consider the position of the undercarriage from that, we can estimate the rearmost position of the center of gravity. And the center of gravity seems to be closer to the front wing, but between the two surfaces. This would mean that the aft surface would be lifting, but also that the aircraft is intrinsically unstable and this would require fly-by-wire and a flight control system. Why would you do that on an aircraft that doesn't need to be really maneuverable or doesn't have a massive shift of the center of gravity? Well, it beats me. It is more weight, more complexity, more development time, for what? Sorry, sorry, sorry for the interruption. This is the editing gas a few days later. I did this analysis again, and now I have the impression that probably the center of gravity is slightly ahead of the aerodynamic center. And in this case, the aircraft would be stable. This would mean that if the aft wing is lifting, then the only downward lift is from the V-tail, but it seems too small, so I would expect that the aft wing would be lifting down. So at this point I don't really know what to think. On with the show. So I can't really work out the rationale for such a configuration from an aerodynamic point of view. I'm sure that the designers at Chengdu will have compelling reasons, but I can find them. It is also worth noting that in the most recent photos, these nacelles at the junction of the two surfaces have been introduced in place of vertical surfaces. I believe that these have been introduced because those vertical surfaces were creating at the intersection with the wings a small system of vortices that was probably not giving any real lift benefit, but was just introducing extra drag. It is also worth noting that the aircraft has swept wings, not dissimilar from what you can find on a civilian airliner. So I do expect that the cruise speed is actually a bit above the declared 750 km per hour. With a wing like that we may expect it to be around Mach 0.8, that is about 850 km per hour, which is pretty fast for a hail aircraft. Hey, if we can't find a rationale for aerodynamic reasons, maybe there is one for structural reasons. So in flight the wing is bent upwards and the bending moment increases from root to tip in this way. And obviously the wing must be designed to withstand the bending. Upper surface must resist compression, the lower surface must resist traction. The junction of the two wings is probably reducing bending moment on the main wing. And by the way, such an arrangement is pretty common, it happens every time you have a wing-mounted engine. The aft wing will bear its own load, but it also seems to be compressed by the main wing. Such a thin structure being compressed, well, it's not ideal, it's probably prone to instabilities, and considering that on the horizontal plane, the two wings obviously have an angle. I mean, there's also a torsion that, yeah, it's complex and definitely not ideal load situation. I can see this configuration as a measure for reducing some structural weight, but I'm not entirely sure if this can really be achieved, and it is definitely quite a complicated arrangement. 
However, the bending of such long wings has never really been a problem. There have been several solutions and it's not particularly difficult to design. Every sport glider has a wing like that. So it's quite difficult to understand why they went to such a length just to make a slightly stiffer and maybe slightly lighter structure. The only real advantage that I can see is that a forward swept wing with the tip captive, like in this case, definitely won't have torsion problems. But even in this case, we have known for decades how to do that using composite materials. So again, it's not clear why the Chinese designers went into these complications, even from a structural point of view. So I really can't find any compelling advantage in this configuration. Maybe it's just me not seeing it. If anyone has a better idea, please let me know in the comments below. If any of the designers is watching this and wants to contact me to explain what happened here, they are welcome. We will go over again this aircraft and we'll see their ideas. Obviously, if it's not classified information. So I suppose that sometimes you should just accept that we are not understanding. Well, at least not entirely. However, this is not the first case that we are covering a very peculiar Chinese drone. And the relative video is going to appear beside me. So if you want to learn more about Chinese drone, Chinese aeronautics and so on, click on them. So if you are still here, thank you very much. And an even bigger thank you to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon or by being a member or by one-off donations. You can also support the channel by buying a model from Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I have a small percentage, but there is no extra cost for you. So thank you very, very much for watching and see you there.